So prove that Sn is equal to A times 1 minus R to the N all over 1 minus R. So we have the sum of our terms and our first term is going to be uh, A. Our second term, A R, so that's R to the power of 1 and our first term R is to the power of 0. Our next term, A times R to the power of 2. Our next term, our fourth term, a to the power, a times r to the power of three. So you can see my power is going down. So on my fourth term, uh, the power is to the power of three. So when I get to my last term here, I'm writing it as um, plus a times r to the power of n minus one. So that would be my last term. And in order to show that that is equal to a times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. And to do that, we're going to use proof by induction. And proof by induction is a three-step process. We show it's true for n is equal to 1. We assume it's true for n is being equal to k. And then finally, we prove that it's true, or we show it's true, for n is equal to k plus 1. So that's what we need to do. So our first step is to show true for n is equal to positive one. So I'm basically going to sub that in to my formula. So s of one is equal to a times one minus r to the power of n, n is one in this case, all over one minus r. And that is giving me a times one minus r all over one minus r. One minus r, one minus r will cancel out. So that's basically just leaving me to, with the sum of the first term equal to a. And that is true. We can see from our sequence at the top, uh, our first term is a. So we've shown it's true for n is equal to one. Now though, we want to come along and assume it's true for n is equal to positive k. So we wanna show that it's true for n is equal to k. So I'm coming along now and I'm taking my sequence from up above which is going to be a plus a r plus a r squared and so on and so on and so on until I get to a r to the n minus 1. Now n I'm going to substitute in with a k subtract 1 and I'm assuming that that is the same as a times 1 minus r to the power of n which is now a k all over 1 minus r. So I'm assuming that that is true. So now my third and final step is to prove through for n is equal to k plus 1. That's my final step now that I have to carry out. So basically what I'm going to do is if you can kind of imagine it here, I'm going to keep all of these terms. These are all coming down. And all I'm doing then is adding on my next term. So I'm at term k and I'm now going to the next term k plus 1. So these are all coming down with me. So I have a plus a r plus a r squared and so on and so on and so on a r k subtract 1. But now what I'm doing is I'm subbing in k plus 1 where I had my n. So this will now become my next term is going to become uh, let's just change the color here plus a or k plus 1 subtract 1. So hopefully you can see that this k plus 1 here is being subbed in for the n and then the minus 1 here is this minus 1. So just don't mix up the uh, the ones as you go through. And what I want that then to be equal to, I'm trying to show that that is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power of k plus 1 all over 1 minus r. So throughout this proof now from here on in, I'm going to ignore the right hand side. That's what I want to show is true, but I'm basically just ignoring it now. So tidying it up, we've now assumed uh, that this part, let's just box it off in green, that this portion, we've assumed that that is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power of k all over 1 minus r. Again, I'll just arrow it down. It's coming from here. That's our assumption from up above. So I'm using that assumption here in my proof. And I'm going to add on my additional part, a r to the k plus 1 
subtract one. And again, that's going to hopefully equal to the right hand side. My next step now is to hopefully see that this plus one and minus one can cancel out. So that's just leaving me then with a or to the power of k. So I have a times one minus r to the k all over one minus r plus a r to the power of k. I'm going to put that over one and I'm going to find my common denominator so I can add these two fractions together. So my common denominator here is going to be one minus r. So I'm going to keep my left hand fraction as it is. It's already over my common denominator, so nothing to do there. But my right hand fraction is now going to become a multiplied by r to the k times one minus r all over one minus r. And again, I'm trying to prove that that's equal to the right hand side. Uh, making it a single fraction now, I'll have a times one minus r to the power of k plus a r to the power of k times one minus r all over one minus r. I'm now going to multiply in the factors. So if I multiply in this a and multiply in this a r to the power of k into the second bracket, so I get a 1a minus uh, a r to the power of k plus 1a r to the power of k minus uh, a r to the power of k times r. What's common to all four terms? There's an a common to all four, so let's factorize out the a. Again, don't forget actually, that's over one minus r. So if I factorize out the a on the top, that's giving me a times uh, one minus r to the k plus r to the k, or one r to the k, minus uh, r to the k times r, all over one minus r. Uh, look inside now, I have a minus rk and a plus rk, they can cancel off. Uh, next step I'm going to focus in now on is this part here, this r to the power of one. Using my log tables, I'm gonna join in that r to the power of one with the r to the power of k. So that's the same as a times one minus r to the power of k plus one. So uh, r to the power of k times r is the same as r to the power of k plus one. So that's just coming from my log tables. All over one minus r equals. And you can hopefully see that we are done because what were we trying to prove? The aim here was to get it equal to this which is a times one minus r to the k plus one all over one minus r. And you can see that I now have the same on the left and the right of the equals. So my conclusion is, so therefore it's true for n is equal to k plus one. Uh, and why? Since true for n is equal to one, uh, we've proved true for n is equal to k plus one. So therefore it must be true for any, val any value for n. And that's our proof.